to the Kung Fu Electric Boogaloo, and this is the end! Season 10, Do You Believe in Magic, wraps up this episode. It's insane, it feels crazy to me, but all good things must come to an end. I am your host, 8th Dan Stanadu, and I am super happy to be with you, and I'm also super happy to be joined by my good friend, I have Nick Boxer. Greetings and salutations. You said this was the last one this season, man? Because I believe in going out with style, and this movie definitely accomplishes that. It, it's something. It, 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 it achieves several things. <laughs> and I know somebody who's super happy to talk about those things. We got Jack Hall in the house. Sup, champs? This, uh, yeah... Uh, let's let's get going here. This is going to take a while. <laughs> <laughs> All <laughs> right. This movie's going to take quite a while. <laughs> okay. So, and then, of course, we have James Cotta. I, I feel like as soon as we have the summary from Nick, we should just jump ahead to what the fuck moments. <laughs> <laughs> well, <'cause, laughs> I don't know what else is going to be in the episode. Honestly. That should be the movie. Basically. <laughs> we, we'll just, we'll just at the, the, what the fuck moments. We'll just start at the top of the movie. And then once we wrap up the talking about the movie, well, what the, what the fuck moments will like, see, will be see mostly above. done. See above. <laughs> yeah, yes. Yes. All right. And the, and the said movie of course is, Furious from 1984, not to be confused with any of the other movies called Furious, but uh, certainly not to be confused with like the Fast and the Furious movies. Don't watch those, though they may very well have some boogaloo elements. I refuse to believe that they could have as many boogaloo elements as this one. Um, if you combine all of their boogaloo elements from all 47 <laughs> movies they've made, it's not as much as you're going to find in this one. No, no. And uh, ultimately... Uh, Ultimately, betrays him by sending him on a quest to gather five or six uh, pieces of medallion, which will give the evil Kung Fu master access to the ultimate evil. Um, but Simon Reese clues in near the end and fights the ultimate ma- the the evil master. And yeah, that's basically what happens story wise. But did I mention, for some unknown reason, Kung Fu, at certain points in this movie, is replaced by close-up magic? (laughs) (laughs) Well, there is a magician in here, so a a sorcerer. And there is a magician or sorcerer, yes, and and there is. And and they're fighting, apparently, aliens, so they they look exactly like humans. Um, I think it's another plane is another planet. I think. I think there's... I think there's really? traveling between two planets via a doorway, hmm. um, and not not like a magic doorway. <laughs> I just... did not get that at all. No, did that no, happen no, after no, no. before I, I'm sure. the chicken? I, I, hold on. This is one time when this might actually work. Uh, Furious, 1984, from IMDb. Martial arts heroes battle aliens from the astral plane for control of the universe. How did you miss that? I <clears throat> seems so obvious when you watch it to me. Uh, I don't. This... I don't buy really? anything of that. <laughs> I, I know this movie is. This... They battled chickens for control of the universe. That's what they <laughs> okay. did. Let's start with this. I counted. Um, 
the first line, if you're having trouble figuring out what was going on and where people were from, it might be for reasons like this. The first line of dialogue, actual dialogue, is spoken 12 minutes and 20 seconds into the film. <laughs> 12 minutes and 20 seconds for the first, not including the coo 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 That doesn't count. <laughs> I... I could not stop thinking of Bob and Doug McKenzie. Oh, for well, yes, that's it, to me, yes. it is the it's it's the anthem. What kind of choice was that? Like, <laughs> I don't, I don't. Well, there is. So, I no have a lot of questions stuff. about that guy, being that he was the Mongol leader. Yeah, Mongol and, leader and yeah. white, and he did the Bob and Doug McKenzie call. Like, there's so much to unpack just from that one character by himself. I did have a theory about how this movie got made. I'm figuring it got made by the extras of Jim Cotta during their off time. <laughs> I was going to say copious amounts of drugs, but... Uh, <laughs> uh, it's as good a theory as any I've heard. Honestly, I... <laughs> I to 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 yes. There's so it the movie opens up with a woman, uh, a girl, mm-hmm. young girl, uh, one of the few people who looks like she might know a little martial arts in the movie. Uh, she's in it for about three minutes <laughs> in total. She's running for some reason from this group of people. All of them look pretty normal except for the one guy for no reason that we can think of, dressed like a mongrel, um, fur fur and everything. Uh, he signals the other guys um, when he spots her by holding up his mouth and, and cupping his lips and, and literally doing the Bob and Doug McKenzie, coo, roo, coo, 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 that thing, right? Um, then they keep chasing each other. They get to the top of a, of a, of a mountain, massive mountain for which, which they come back to later, apparently because they, 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 they I don't know. And <laughs> so that the top of the mountain, one guy goes to attack her. She kills him because she throws uh, shoot throwing stars into his ass which is a well-known artery which, of which death. Which he turns around and bends over to take. Yeah, yeah. Well-known artery of death, uh, uh, shooting stars to the ass. It'll kill you every time. Uh, that and the throat are the two best places to to kill somebody with uh, with a sharp object. <laughs> um, and then and then the, the Hmong, the, the whatever dude in the furs, he shows up, and she's on the ground now, and she has this, like, horn thing, and and... Uh, and she's afraid of him after she kicks him or somebody else in the face. I can't remember, but she's on the ground and then he picks up the horn and then we never see her again until she shows up later, apparently dead. We'd never see him beat her up or kill her. We don't know how he got the corn, yeah, yeah, he the horn because he, she yeah. had it in her hands yeah. and then, or right in front of her. And then he just picks it up and she just apparently let him and it's got blood all over it and, and, and like nothing. No. He, he hit her with his staff. It doesn't show her, him hitting her, but it show it's it's her point of view, and he slams the staff down. And then oh, is that what that the, was? Yeah, that's what that was. Yeah, was just, it's her was point of view. I thought but, he was just studying himself. No, the camera angle was her point of view, and he like hit her, like hit her, and then when he picks up the the horn, it's all covered. Well, over. I saw how hard he hit her. There's no way that hurt. They, I'm not sure anyone gets hit in this movie and hurt. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> like, do, you, do you ever see those behind the scenes videos of uh, of martial arts movies like you know Matrix where they where the, they slow motion the fight scene like they move they do all the movements slowly so that no one gets hurt while they're practicing this entire movie looks like that yes <laughs> every move looks about a like a 20th of the speed that it should be at <laughs> it, there's a bunch of people that do martial arts in this movie but only clearly half of them have any training so those half look fantastic, like they totally know what they're doing, and the rest look they couldn't look worse. And and yes, you can literally see people reacting like they're being hit when it's like, and literally almost probably eighteen to twenty four inches from their head. The the connection, it's fantastic. And and they're often very early in their reactions as well. <laughs> So anyway, so then, so then, dude that was at the top of the mountain that took that hit her with the staff and took this horn thing. I, I don't really understand still that the horn significance. But then he shows up. At, so her brother, I think it's her brother, um, is training, or he's 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 in like a a like there's a bunch of kids training martial arts, and he's in his hut, and then he comes out, and everybody's really happy to see him. Then he beats up a a uh, like a heavy bag. And everybody watches him, and then he walks away, so he doesn't really train them. And then he goes back to his house. Then the dude who just killed his sister shows up and has the horn. And then, so 
then he, he goes to Astro note. Plane to see the guy who to see the guy who he trusts, who's on the Astro Plane, and is mainly the alien, but is in charge of stuff. And then the the hooligan just walks in afterwards. I don't know what's happening. Am I missing anything? I like well, the killer of his of his sister shows up and just hands him a note. Yeah, like, um, <laughs> like I. I'm here. Hi, how you doing? When it, when he's, uh, no, sister, I, I think. That let he, me just kick I, this dog away. This dog is trying to attack me. Won't leave me alone. Let me just kick it. And he literally really kicking the dog. So the dog really was excited to see him. Probably because he smelled <laughs> like fur. What the hell's that sound? I believe our helicopter is here to pick us up. <laughs> you know what? Finally, there he is. We've been wondering where. Uh... <laughs> That's the same. That helicopter sound effect is the same one they use when the guy's swinging swords. Uh, yeah, that could be. Anyway, <laughs> wasn't that Brad Ock? <laughs> Anyways. So then they go into the Astro Spain plane. And it was here that I started to not be able to pick up the plot. <laughs> I think you just uh, needed to give to pick up, it up what plot. happens from here. No, I think you handle it. I, um, I I was unaware there were aliens in this movie. So. <laughs> yeah, I know. I we're, still, we're way I far. still believe that that is that is uh, you have completely put that on because IMDb said so. Well, I don't think there's a single thing in this movie that indicates that. Okay, so but here's the thing: is 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 they're in this village and in this mountain and in this rural area. And then they clearly go through some sort of gateway, and and the astral plane just looks like it just looks like a modern building outside, like this, like, like, you know, I thought it was a, just a building. Like I didn't think yeah, it was yeah, anything anywhere. Like, it's just, <laughs> but they're clearly now in a in an urban setting. But yeah. I think this is supposed to be advanced. It looks advanced compared to the other stuff because it's an, a real building with glass and metal and whatever. So, but it's shaped like a triangle or a pyramid, I guess. Um, it's just a building. I don't know. No. I didn't. I didn't really think anything. I didn't see that either. <laughs> Are you sure you're not confusing what you learned from this movie with a like a Devo video or something? <laughs> well, there is that too. There is. The, let's not forget the band. Oh, that's I, that's I love the, that's something. I love the broad mix of kung fu styles. Um, like we have some. Uh, we have some punchy kung fu we've got a ton of different kinds of weapons and then as the bad guys are the ga- bad guys have killed off his friends who appear for 30 seconds but get star treatment in the credits um yes everybody and, gets star treatment in the credits the and, girl the girl there the worst martial arts in the movie it's hilarious you said in slow motion if they sped it up by five <laughs> that would be slow motion when she's kicking <laughs> I now want to watch because this is on YouTube. I now want to watch it at like two times the speed and see what it looks like. <laughs> um, <laughs> but as they're getting away, they use that most classic of kung fu weapons to uh, to kill her: the thirty-eight revolver. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> A lot of times, people in this have like nunchucks or, or things, and then never use them to fight anybody. They show off with it and then never <laughs> use it to attack anybody. It's there's it, there's a lot of showing off with the with the nunchucks in this movie, <laughs> and also um did some did some showing off with a sigh later on. So, yep. uh, uh, you know, well he goes into the restaurant, and it's someone's going to have to handle the restaurant as a separate issue. Well, um, well, yeah, I'm I'm actually I you don't know this, but I'm actually recording this entire show behind a menu. <laughs> 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 so, because a lot of restaurants you go into for entertainment have a guy on stage with nunchucks for no reason, just doing stuff like that's he's a got, common thing. He so he's so there's a guy on on stage doing a martial arts demonstration with nunchucks, and then he's and then our hero goes and sits down, and then he switches to scimitars, another traditional kung fu weapon. Mm-hmm. Um, and then when it, when a fight finally ensues, he basically punches that guy and he falls down. Like the guy does about five minutes. See, of, you're like, missing a major component of this scene for me. Is you got all this going on? You have uh, the heads being served on a platter in the restaurant. In addition to this bizarre martial arts display going on, yet the camera seems to be focused on one neat, what, la- older lady that's seen nowhere else in this movie eating chicken wings <laughs> for the entire scene. 
Yeah, she's eating. It's cl- and it's really <laughs> close ups of her eating chicken for a really, really long time for no reason whatsoever. Well, that's not even the most interesting thing in the shot, and that they don't they don't move the freaking camera. They just it's just her eating chicken wing. It it I can't believe. Like, what choice is that? <laughs> well, choice. this. This movie is sponsored by the chicken producers of, <laughs> of wherever it was shot, of Mongolia. Now, the, the alien dude that produces the chickens and his kung fu Stop. and is running the He's restaurant. Not an alien. Okay, not what alien. about him makes him an alien? <laughs> I, I, <laughs> I think he was a sorcerer, I, I think. He, he's the, the, the sorcerer is wearing the mask. Alien, I believe in him. Because what, what chickens are an important part of this what movie. Is, Let's yeah. not... Yeah, but is he turning people into chickens? Because he turns the two heads into chickens, and then there's something like uh, near the end of the movie where he's dying, and he says, God, the old master was cheap. He was making me, <laughs> m- making me make chickens for the restaurant. And I was like... Is he turning people into chickens? Is is that why we were focused on the lady eating chicken wings? That there was some sort of cannibalistic thing going I think on? That's it. I think they were trying to imply that you think you're eating chickens, but you're actually eating people. I think so. But then again, it could also be pigs because they can be turned into people too. Um, and well, when that, you get turned into yeah, a pig, talking pigs, yeah, talking well, pigs. But but clearly, when you end. As as everybody knows, when you become a talking pig, you immediately turn from evil to good. <laughs> well, our our sorcerer is fighting our hero, and uh, and he makes these little like flame fireballs that turn into a chicken. So, I f- I figured he can just spontaneously make chicken. Um, <laughs> I think you've just glossed over this whole chicken fireball thing way too much. Somebody. <laughs> Somebody has to go into way more detail into what the hell was happening here. We would if we knew. <laughs> like, literally. It's, it's a fight where he's using chickens as a projectile weapon. Um, yes. He, he, <laughs> but he's spontaneous. He's not turning people in. There's no other people in the room. So he no. is spontaneously generating these chickens. Oh, I, I was just Shooting assuming there was chicken-based powers, but... Yes. So it's what I like, range of what I like, is that this sorcerer has chicken again, and, and so the guy keeps on showing up to fight him with martial arts, and then they showing chickens at him, and eventually one of the chickens she shows that hit him, and he just brushes it off because it's it's a chicken, it doesn't hurt at all. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? what strategy is this to try and defeat somebody in a fight? It's the most incredible scene, maybe in the history of movies. Like. And then, and then instead, he does decide to turn up, but not into a chicken now, into a pig, and and he ducks away the the guy he's attacking, and so the magic bounces off the mirror back at him, and then he becomes a talking pig, and like mm-hmm. I say, this evil sorcerer now is all of a sudden good. The mm-hmm. talking pig, somebody please describe the voice. Somebody, tr- I cannot. Like, how do you describe this? Well, and it goes on for a long time. Oh boy, does it ever! It's it's one of those interesting cases where it's it's like. It's like you're trying to talk, like, not not by expelling your air, but inhaling your air. Like, like I'm talking like this, you know. Yeah, and that's it's, it. <laughs> and, and it's really hard on your voice, and like, and so apparently that's how they felt like pigs sounded when they went and recorded the audio for the entire movie. Um, I he I will defend that voice though. I thought it was talking pig uh, appropriate for a talking pig that had just just been hit in the throat and killed. I I did not find that well, odd at all. Because the thing is, he, he shoots the magic at the mirror. It bounces back. He becomes the pig. But he's still... Uh, he's still... Like, it's just the top... Like, it's just his head that becomes the pig, I think. Because he's clearly still... S- Tall, uh, taller than the guy that the martial arts guy is attacking our hero, who just looks then, at him all shocked. Extra arms, yeah. The little legs were sticking out the collar. Yeah, so 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 the hero reacts by by being shocked, and this just kind of shrugs his shoulder and just kicks this poor pig right. <laughs> just the kicks that kid right. That he kicks that pig to death. He does. <laughs> that's the thing. That's a thing that happens in this movie. <laughs> <laughs> a guy kicks a pig to death. 
<laughs> and it's and it's in context. <laughs> <laughs> After the, I, I, the, IMDb, the IMDb summary should be after after an onslaught of chickens, our hero kicks a pig to death. <laughs> There's a lot of animal <laughs> hating in this movie. <laughs> See I, that earlier fight where his where uh, where Simon's friends are there for just the one scene, um, and they immediately get killed. In during that fight, there's a chicken that gets thrown through a shot. Like, it's just like people are fighting and then there's a chicken in the foreground. And I'm like, why the hell is there a chicken there? And then a chef showed up. I'm like, I don't know. Maybe the chicken was in with him. Like maybe they came, maybe they carpooled. Maybe they came together. (laughs) They did an Uber pool. Like they were just, they showed up for the fight at the same time. Well, Uh, (laughs) and when they, when they went to the, to the restaurant originally and everything was closed. The, of course, the weirdest thing was is that they were bringing in crates, and you could hear that they added in a whole bunch of chicken noises. So it's just like you're just left to assume that every roll of the crates has chickens in them. And I'm thinking, like, what the hell is it about chickens that they were just like, fuck, man, we gotta, we gotta use more chickens in this. Well, chickens are gonna be important like, later. Yeah. yeah, chickens are chickens are a deadly weapon. Uh, I mean, yes, we like, like, okay, sure. The, the, the sure can thrown into the ass will kill, but can you imagine if you had that uh, I mean, chicken thrown into the ass? Can you imagine the death that would have uh, the blood? Uh, the, oh, this movie's amazing. Like, um, <laughs> now I, I, I think for audience, we have to clarify something because we've been talking about this. This is serious. This is well, not yeah, a yeah, fucking comedy, yeah. man. Yeah. This all really happened, <laughs> and it's all played straight. Yes. At no time are we expected to laugh. Sure, we might uncomfortably laugh, but this is serious. <laughs> this is not some naked gun sketch we're describing. If you've not seen this film, you don't understand. This is life or death. This is a life of Jack <laughs> chicken fight where a guy gets turned into a pig. And the pig is kicked to death by our hero. <laughs> it's so true. You guys believe what you're watching. So, so his his sister at the beginning of the film climbs this sheer cliff to get to the the cave, and then she uses the horn, which presumably is directing her toward what she's looking for. But, but the she box she's it? looking for is like a yeah, it's like a foot away from where she is. Yep, and then. But every, but as she's climbing this sheer cliff, like four times, the people who have been pursuing her are ahead of her. So, is there like a path up the other side of this hill <laughs> that she could have just strolled up? Because <laughs> like everyone beats her there, and then like and then later, our hero does exactly the same thing. He climbs up the sheer cliff, and the bad guy's already there. He has beaten them there by like taking the. Well, no, I mean the bad, <laughs> bad guy, the guy, bad guy flew there, which. You know, was was not, you know, into that that he could fly from the entire movie. <laughs> the bad guy flew there to get there first. <laughs> nice. Our hero had to walk. Oh my god! There's no way we can recap all the WTF in this. There's just no <laughs> way. There's no way. <laughs> like you can't. And what was <sighs> with the? Cl- uh, they're up on the top of the thing. The bad guy is assembling <sighs> the metals. And then does some sort of close-up magic involving the box. Like, ooh, all of a sudden there's no bottom in this box. And the guy's sister sort of appears in the... I I had no idea what was going on. I actually wanted to cry during that point. Like, just... I, I thought that she had gone broke, through... Because broke. they talk about the astral plane... And I felt like she had gone through to the to the astral plane because the uh, the plane was dangerous. Of course, we Wait, we learned that she didn't isn't die. She, she's a ghost, isn't she? Like, here's the thing: this is the problem with this movie. Your brain instinctively wants to make sense out of things. <laughs> Your brain is instinctively trying to understand what you're seeing. That's its function. This movie. <laughs> see, designed. see at the very it's end, like that functioned. So we see the we see the sister and she's like she's in a ghostly form and she's pulling down the bad guy and all I could 
think was, is she in hell? Like, is that <laughs> is that actually what's happening right now? Like, she she really seems to be wanting to punish the bad guy. Um, <laughs> but clearly they're going the same place. Uh, the spiritual void is what they actually call the, the thing. Uh, mm. sp- he's, war- he's warned about the spiritual void Wait, is about that 150 black- term- or- times. So the spiritual void is the black room they fight in twice, right? Yeah, I, I guess. I don't know. Oh. Traveling in a <laughs> Why they are say you the asking line, us questions? They, they we, say the line "traveling I in a spiritual void" can be dangerous. <laughs> Dude, you can't if understand. Oh. It, the whole the whole movie is like a Zen Cohen. It's the sound of one hand clapping. It is the sound <laughs> of one pig being kicked to death. <laughs> 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 Here's my problem. I feel like we're underselling this to people. Like, <laughs> that's the problem. Like, everything we say, we're still managing to undersell what this thing is. <laughs> Did it's someone awful. even figure out where this thing was shot? I mean, I, for a while, I thought it was a Chinese, like, type bootleg, so. but all the actors are white, and I, oh. it hurt. <laughs> oh, it's so good. It's so it is. Oh, Forget that. It's just the best seventy-three minutes you'll spend today. <laughs> That's like a long episode of Game of Thrones, and you're gonna get a hell of a lot more enjoyment out of this. <laughs> well, the the thing is, is that you don't even notice that seventy-three minutes are going by for the most part. In this case, like like there's movies that we talk about where where I'm like, oh yeah, that eighty minutes felt like felt like 200 minutes in this case this is like 70 73 minutes and and i was like 10 minutes left of the movie and i'm like really wow so when are they going to yeah. explain the plot <laughs> like, wow. yeah yeah that, that you see see we watch from a different perspective i was just i was watching this fucker thinking god i have to explain this shit <laughs> what the fuck yeah. Whereas I was watching and saying, ha, ha, Nick has to explain this shit. <laughs> I, I actually I was sitting there with my wife Lacey and watching this. She was like reading something while I'm watching it, but but she periodically looked up and said, Is he kicking a pig to death? Um <laughs> and I guess that's uh, that's what's happening in this movie. Um <laughs> <laughs> but I, I, I said, don't even know that that's the craziest scene in the movie. <laughs> but I, but I, I said to her as we're watching, I'm like, you know what? My favorite part of of this of doing a show uh, about a movie like this is waiting for Nick to explain <laughs> what happened in the movie. I, I just I can't wait to hear. Uh, <laughs> oh my god! So so our hero <sighs> takes uh, takes almost an hour of the 73 minutes to get all of these uh, is four medallions. He's got to get together. Um, and he holds on to them for about 45 seconds. Yep. <laughs> and then and then just gives them to the bad guy, basically. <laughs> the bad guy's like, oh, you've got the medallions. I will take those. And he's like, hey, cut that out. And then the bad guy, you know, fucks off. Uh, <laughs> well, yeah, because because the bad guy at least doesn't know that he has the the horn, which is what, what he really needs. <laughs> Ultimately, for I guess. some I understood reason. nothing to do with the tusk. It's not a horn; it's a tusk. Oh, thank you. Yeah, that I that, that I anything to do with that? I was like, I have no idea what's going on with that. <laughs> Can we go back I know to it's bre- important, but I don't know what it does. <laughs> it does it guide them to the top of the mountain? I don't know. It can we go back? To please, please, can we go back to the restaurant scene, please? I, I, the restaurant with the, the, the martial artist on stage. Uh, can one of you explain to me why it is our hero? He sits down and picks up the menu, and then peers over it, so all you can see is his eyes, and they're moving back and forth, and he's just staring at the lady eat, and we know no reason why. He stares at the lady eat, then he stares at the stage, then he stares at the lady eat, then he stares at the stage, and it goes on for I don't know. You say this is 73 minutes. It's got to be 70 of them right there. <laughs> well, I think the thing about that is, that scene is that obviously this is the same restaurant that he and his friends um, you know, attacked and were and were attacked at 
the, the yes, yes, it is. If you look at the symbols, then that's exactly the same restaurant. So now they're because open. They, he mm-hmm. just came yeah. out of where yeah, the where the evil guy's headquarters yeah. were, walked out into the building, and that's where his friends who immediately attack him were. So you think that they're bad guys, and then they all go, ha, 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 good to see you. Yes, well, uh, that's that's well, yeah, and then you, they go and they check the restaurant, which is closed, which is uh, uh, you know, that's right, inco- inconvenient, yes, at, uh, at best. And then, but yeah, it is the same restaurant. He comes back during its operating hours. Yeah, and uh, so really, he could have he could have called ahead and checked this. Like, I mean, if you're gonna avenge your sister, you could at least find out what hours the restaurant's open. But he so didn't know the about the restaurant, the restaurant though. because see, so see, see, he gets he gets that note, of course, from from his his uh, sensei, his master there, yeah. and and, or, and that symbol and that symbol, right? And so so he takes that symbol, and then when he meets his friends who attack him the one guy says oh no 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 i know that i've seen that symbol so they walk 10 feet and get to the restaurant (laughs) which which is closed okay and so so then they go around back of the restaurant which is attached to the building that his master owns and so so then yeah he's banging around and of course they should then all the bad guys show up with their chickens and they all get attacked, and of course, most of all of his friends die uh, because they're inept. yeah, all of them die, every single one of them. And no, no, well, weren't one. there three friends in the first scene, and there were only two heads on the platter? Well, it, yeah, yeah, but but one of the but I think one of them just died right there. So so like, whereas the other two, I just get the feeling they were hunted down and killed for sport. Oh later. my god, how did I miss? That? Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, I mean that that that's just silly that I missed that. So then, <laughs> the girl when, gets shot. Yeah, the, girl, the girl's shot yes. by the ancient kung fu thirty eight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. See, it was the perms on the head, the decapitated head. That's that same uh, guy. on the platter that confused me. <laughs> the same guy that shot her. Didn't our hero beat him in a separate fight like five separate times, and he just kept showing up like <laughs> nothing had happened? Yeah. But and so uh-huh. so then yes, I watched the tracking version. I couldn't tell you. <laughs> Everybody looked the same in this one. <laughs> when, so when <laughs> when he goes back to the restaurant, of course he has to hide his face because he is the guy who attacked all of these people already. Mm. See, perfect sense. A long way around to explain that menu. Yeah. <laughs> so you watch the tracking because they say so there's one with tracking that's really bad. And one that's pretty clear on YouTube. So you watch the tracking version. You say, Nick, did did that have? Because there's two different versions with like there's versions with music, two different types of uh, soundtracks. So one is classical, which is the one that the clear one that I saw. Is the tracking version also the classical music, or it is is it the uh, music they took from porn movies that they used? The upbeat tempo music from porn movies. And I, yes, well, that, I believe that was the deciding factor for me. Is that I needed the porn music? <laughs> it's kind of a kind of a techno-y music because I remember the like they show the band. There's a band that shows up periodically for no apparent reason that yeah. are made up of like aliens or astro guys or just bad guys, whatever they are, have a band. The three. Well, there piece. was there is a point where they they take part in the attacking. Yeah, uh, I don't know why. I call, yeah, I call them like. So, so it, it is actual music from porno music or actual. Uh, um, you know, public domain classical music. Those are the two soundtracks you have a choice from. See, which, but, either both of them, which is awesome. But there, there's like right at the end when we're seeing it, when they go back to the band playing, they are the the music in the version I watched. It was the more techno-y, so it must have been the porn movie music. Um, so it's a three-piece band, and none of those instruments are in the music. That is magic. Oh, definitely. Band playing. <laughs> but I mean, while the band is playing, you can't hear them anyway because the alarm is going off <laughs> because our hero has attacked a black guy outside the building. And then the alarm goes off, and then they cut to the band, which I think the band were security guards. Oh, we forgot about the blowjob security guards. Huh? Which was. Huh? Yeah. Sorry, I, I when, missed when, that. When, when the alarm goes off, we we have a guy with sunglasses in the Devo uniform reading a comic book. Yeah. Uh-huh. And just smiling. Uh huh. And he looks he's weird. Reading comic book. Yeah. Then they cut to the band. And then they cut back to the guy, uh, the security guard, reading the comic book. All of a sudden, he decides to react to the. Um, 
He turns oh, around and sees what's happening on the, the screen. He puts down the comic book, mm-hmm. and a guy gets up from below the screen. What? What? No, he didn't. He was napping yes, he on did. the damn table. Like, his head so was there down. Were, a... I, I prefer to... I agree he was napping on the table, but I prefer Nick's version. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's fair. Yeah. <laughs> See, I, got, I, I thought the security guy was getting a blowjob and reading a comic book. Because <laughs> that's your that dream. Thing. That's why. <laughs> that's that's your personal ideal <laughs> moment. So that's that's why you you saw that. You're projecting. I don't know. I spent a lot of time thinking about chickens. <laughs> well, so, okay, so let me get this straight now. So you were projecting reading a comic while getting a blowjob from a chicken. <laughs> okay. Uh. I don't know that could have happened. <laughs> it all makes sense. I was so now. confused by this movie. <laughs> all right, let's let's get to the school. Yeah, that why seems did the pervert cross, Why did the pervert cross the road? To get to the chicken? <laughs> His dick was stuck in the chicken. Yeah. <laughs> ah, classics. All right. Well, let's, let's head to scoring. In our search for the ultimate B-movie, we rate each film in five categories. Stan, how many of them are objective quality? Uh, let's see now. Um, none. Divide it's none. The four. None, none, of, <laughs> none of them are objective quality. Uh, our first category, uh, which is not objective quality, is called schlock appeal. And Stan, why don't you start? Well, okay. Um, you know, ah, what to say about this movie that hasn't been said before? <laughs> but, um, <laughs> there's there's so much to this movie that uh, where where it's just like you you just have to in most cases you have to watch a movie with a boogaloo lens and and it it shows you something. In this case, you throw out every lens and you just kind of let the movie wash over you and try not to think about it at all because the more that you think about it the more that you get to be it like hurts. nick and it hurts so so see i movies shouldn't hurt for the most part and so i let the experience kind of wash over me as as i watch this movie so i think for that reason i'm i'm going to go with a nine yeah you went way high on the schlock appeal i i, I don't know if this movie is schlocky it's Oh, weird. Oh, what? <laughs> I mean, it's weird, but for Schlock, I always sort of started to think of a more of a marketing angle. And I can't, I, it doesn't feel that schlocky. The, the poster that has a guy that does not appear in this movie on it. <laughs> Um, is certainly shockly. I think it might have been a shot from Ninja 3 The Domination. Um, <laughs> I'm not 100% sh- sh- sure. Um, the generic title that has absolutely nothing uh, nothing to do with this movie and takes a little bit of schlock away. Uh, this is weird enough, and it has some sort of ninjas and I'm told aliens, so that's schlocky. I am I'm, I'm going to give it a six. Wow. It's going it, to score higher later on, I promise you. Uh, wow. Okay, it's a ten because the this, the this movie is terrible. The only reason why it's so bloody entertaining is because of how schlocky it is, which is the point. <laughs> ten. <laughs> I I would be hard pressed to do a pitch for this. I do love that the post the poster mentions uh, the fight aliens for control of the astral plane, but uh, I've, again, I have the f- I don't see a single thing in the movie that, <laughs> that supports that. Uh, so I'm I'm going to go up to the nine as well. Uh, more harsh than budget. I I don't I don't even know what to say for this. Honestly, I mean, like ever I'm acting non-existent. Who know? Who knows? Special effects were were weird and warped. Um, uh, seven. Okay. Seven. All right. Yeah. <laughs> Roll uh, them I'm, along. I'm going a little <laughs> higher. Like they 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 had certain people that knew martial arts and certain people in the film that clearly knew what they're doing. Like they had like stunts and people falling off buildings and stuff like that. That 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 was the only thing they could afford. But those people clearly knew what they were doing. And then you had the script and 
everything else. Um, did we? Did we have a script? <laughs> yeah, that's a good point. I, so I'm like, I, but I really think that these people, I'm positive, these people making this movie were like, God damn it, we're making a great movie. Wait till people see this thing. I really believe that they thought that they were like, man, this is going to, oh, this is going to blow people. They're going to be like, the greatest movie they ever saw. I really believe they thought that. So I am giving it an eight. Uh, this film has two directors, nine. <laughs> 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 all right everyone hydrated it is time for what the fuck moments well yeah i mean so so i i made some notes obviously um we've we've started to go through the movie and i and i think that that this is going to involve us should involve us going through the entirety of the movie and just <laughs> and just basically reciting it but um but you know so so th- there's a few things that i that i noticed now i i found it a little weird so so when they go to our hero's house simon cl- cleverly named simon um that um it has a lock on the outside and I, I also like, thought that was weird. <laughs> it's just like, so is he like totally okay as long as he's in the house that everything's going to be fine? But if he yeah. leaves the house, then then no, I should lock that door. Or he lives in a shed. Like I could. That's all I could. Yeah, think. yeah, yeah. So so that was that was that was something. Yeah. Um, there there's a moment where you can see the uh, the crew and the director in the shadow on the ground as the as a they're moment? about to. Uh, I you... stopped counting the amount of times I saw somebody <laughs> jump. I'm serious. Like somebody who who was like, oh shit, I'm in the shot, and jumped out of the way. I I, can't, I stopped counting at five. <laughs> um, I absolutely adored. The security guards that are out front of uh, of the master's building, um, because they have to do various things with their arms that just seem incredibly annoying. Like, can you imagine how t- like they alternate between having to be like Buckingham Palace guards and not show any emotion with their sunglasses and like holding their arms crossed out in an X as they stand there? Sometimes they hold their arms crossed crossed but while holding a gun. It's um, it's it's wonderful. But uh, and of course they're they're wonderful white uh, um, painter outfits. Um. <laughs> Of course, the chickens. The chickens, the chickens, and the chickens. I mean, you can't speak enough about chickens. Like, you have guys just randomly... Like, there's three guys. I think it's three guys in a row. Like, we're talking about the same building. I think most of my what the fucks are based around the building. But, like, so the security guards have opened the door, and, like, there's guys with chickens just walking out. And I'm like, what? Why? Like, I get that chickens are a thing in this movie, but, like, why are you walking out with, like, just have guys walking out with chickens? Um, we, you know, Nick Nick alluded to it earlier. Like, I thought it was weird when, of course, y- you know, you got the security guy reading the comic book, and then and then you've got all all the, the other stuff. But then, then it's, like, the quick edits between like security guard red light security guard red light fight outside red light security guard and then suddenly it's just like and band and and school and then fight and then band and it's just like all this cutting back and forth and i'm like i don't i actually don't know what's going on anymore (laughs) Um, and then, of course, so the master comes into that security room because we have this enormously long running scene where Simon is running away from the entirety of the building. And my favorite part is the fact that he's running down the riverbed, which is very obviously in the middle of nowhere. And yet the master can see him on the security camera. So I can only assume that somebody is like running around following him with a camera, you know, not just someone, at least two people. Cause there's different angles. Yeah. <laughs> so very, so very impressive. Um, the, you know, we talk about the, we talked about the pig, which, which, you know, and the voice and stuff like that. One of my favorite parts is the fact that, 
that you can see the fact that the pig is, has got tons of peanut butter in its mouth to make it open <laughs> and close its mouth so much because it's actually like splatted onto the onto the white mat that they shot it against like there's peanut butter all over the place and it's just like oh good lord this is awful and then of course finally you see the credits and that was the thing, like the kuru go 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 go, you know that guy. I was sitting there thinking to myself, "Geez, I wonder what he's supposed to be." And then I get to the credits, and I'm like, "Oh, he was the Mongol leader." Okay, great. So all the, the white Mongol all in the, the thing. No, no, but the no, no, no. If you look at the credits, there was four or five other Mongols. I think there was the the guy who went like, "Oh." So that whole gang at the beginning were the Mongols. Yes, so every... the only guy, only guy with a Mongol outfit. Then. No, there was other guys. He had it himself. There was other guys. I, I know there was other guys who had furs on. He was just the guy who stood out the most in the furs, and showed up the most. But I just kind of wondered why Mongols. But um, but that's like <laughs> asking, you know, why the title? Why anything else? Um, so asking why just just hurts in this case. So I'll just leave it with with a solid um, fourteen. That right? Uh, yeah. Um, you know, I I could easily dis dismiss this movie as some sort of drug induced nonsense. Like that's not a real movie I watched. <laughs> um, that you know some only. only... Only dropping acid explains this move that you may have seen this movie to you. Um, yeah, I, I mean, I could just, I, I mean, it's not good. It's just entertaining and it's weird. But the, the most, uh, we're, we're on WTF, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, the most WTF for me is two actors from this movie, the star and his brother have careers. Well, sort of. They started so, best of the best. I mean, I don't know. And it's four sequels. They're or in Inception. Are they in Inception? They're in Inception. <laughs> um, awesome. they're in. I mean, they're credited as stunts in uh, Rush Hour. Basically, if a mainstream movie has an Asian in it, they they they're somewhere around. <laughs> These guys have careers. It's amazing. This movie should have stopped that from happening, and it didn't. <laughs> Ten. Ten on the WJF on this movie, because I don't believe anything. I I don't believe the chickens. I don't believe that this is a real movie, yet I seem to have <laughs> evidence that it exists. If, if we weren't talking about it, you'd really be wondering. Uh, <laughs> Uh, this movie, I also give this a 10 uh, because there is no other option. Um, the problem is there, there's so many, you can, uh, we've talked about so many, and there's so many more that you start to forget because it's 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 so chock full of them. But I, I like the... I, I like the. There's one part where we talk about the the, the guy getting the blowjob, but he, he when he's not watching the monitor and reading the comic book or whatever's going on. That scene is predated by the the hero for some reason outside the building. He enters the the the, the, the there's a shot of the building. All of a sudden, he just jumps onto the onto in front of the screen in this dramatic martial arts pose. But there's nobody around him or no reason to be doing this. This is like if you were jumping around in your apartment for no reason, just going, yeah, yeah, uh, you know, in this <laughs> martial arts pose. It's just, it's just to be dramatic and just to look like, uh, you know, um, it's, it's, it's great. Uh, the, there's the fact that the, there's the fight on the, on the uh, mountain at the end between the good guy and the bad guy, same place, same mountain as, as the, the, the Mongol leader and the, the, the sister are at. Well, they and come for a full circle. Yeah, exactly. Mm-hmm. And same mountain, but it's clearly that they they set up on that mountain and they wanted to use it as much as possible. And this is where they they had like they have this this helicopter that's shooting the it from and, <laughs> and getting further and further away and just circling it. And it does nothing. It doesn't it doesn't project the story. It goes on and on and on. And it just they keep getting farther away so you can see less of the action. And it's just like it's like hey, 
I, I know somebody who has a helicopter. We can use that. And, and so they thought, let's just use it. And they just kept using it. And, it's, and, it's, and it, it, thank God, because it fills in a lot of the 73 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> they, they used every frame of that. <laughs> <laughs> they did scene, not leave a single there, bit of that. There's a scene where they, they just at certain points, they're like, it's clearly that they just found places where they thought this would be a cool place to, to coordinate some sort of fight scene, whatever you call coordinating it. So there's one that's on top of this little, like log bridge thing. Mm. And, and and there's and there's the good guy and and there's a whole a lineup of the bad guys and they keep coming at him and he knocks one over, and then he knocks and and then he knocks another one over. But but the the point I think is the second guy he knocks over. I it's see, a bump. knocking over does not sell what happened in that scene. The no. bad guys were just jumping off that bridge for no apparent reason. <laughs> Basically, they they jumped at him and he and he kind of like no they jump he didn't move and, and he kind of like circles his arm like he's flipping them and then they just jump off and 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 so there's a the one guy it shows him falling and then they cut to another scene of him falling and then he's about three feet from the ground and you can see that he's about fifteen feet away from the stream that the that this log thing's above above. And then the next shot is him falling in the in the in the water, and it's amazing. And I feel so sorry for the guy who had to do that stunt. He just falls face first in this little stream of water and just splash. But it's it's hilarious to watch because he's so like it shows him like literally like half a second earlier, so far away from the water, and then he's in it. And and then everybody else that jumps off afterwards. You hear a splash because they don't want to show you the same shot over again, right. but they weren't going to do it again. So it's just a splash for no reason, but not the very first guy, just everybody after. But the last guy he fights on the top of the bridge, he beats him by he, – he gets him down on the ground and, and like against the bridge. And, and so he takes his fist and he pushes it into his throat. And then he just like, like pushes it, like circles it, like he's giving him a noogie to the throat. But he's clearly like about a half a half an inch or, or an inch away from his throat doing this, and the guy's selling it. It's the most hilarious, awful, incredibly amazing, great thing I've ever seen in my life. See, so I just love this movie. You obviously watched this scene much closer than I did because I spent the entire bridge scene just wondering who built this bridge. It makes this a bridge that makes no sense. So it exists. It, 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 it's a horrible it, design for a bridge. It's a triangular bridge. It comes to a point in the middle. And obviously it exists because I've seen it in this movie. And I don't believe they build it just for this movie because they were obviously using just stuff they had. But th this bridge makes no sense for anything. My fa my favorite part of the bridge scene is that everyone lines up in an orderly fashion. Yeah, <laughs> waiting they're to fight, very waiting to fight him. <laughs> Yeah, they they they're kind of they're warming up slightly, but they're like <laughs> there's no rush at all. And they're actually, just, before the end, cute. the big end yeah, fight, I believe one of the minions steps aside, and the big bad guy excuses himself to fight. <laughs> It's it's yeah. I mean, it's common throughout this entire movie that people will just kind of back off and let others fight, so that you know, because I, you know, you don't you don't want to hurt your own people. So I think I think it's important. All right. Well, we did about a half an hour of those, so I don't have too much to add. <laughs> <laughs> um, the foley work in this movie was awesome. The sound effects work. Oh God, yes. Um, there was, uh, as I mentioned earlier, the guy swinging the scimitars that sounded exactly like a helicopter uh, flying by, uh, and then the big fight between our hero and and the big bad guy. Um, they're they're kicking, they're punching, they're do they're blocking blows, and every single hit uses exactly the same sound effect, and it, a sound effect that my wife described as someone hitting a bag full of milk. <laughs> <laughs> Thunk, just this thunk, thunk, thunk sound. Just every single hit. Exactly the same sound. It was awesome. Uh, during the the fight, the heroes, the hero and the bad guy fight on the top of the mountain, and then they fight in the black room that we assume is the astral plane. Um, and the astral plane is very smoky. But at one point, for just like three seconds, 
a dragon head appears. Mm-hmm. Oh, with a, I forgot with about a the dragon skeleton head. in its mouth. And it's like the fakey, fakiest worth like, dragon you've ever seen. It's like leftover from a from a kids show or something, with a with what looks like a Spanish um, conquistador skeleton <laughs> in in its mouth. He punches it, and it and I'm like, well, the the, the dragon must symbolize something. He must we must be coming back to that. No, uh, we do not. <laughs> We do not ever return to it. It is that three seconds where he punches it in the nose is the only dragon in the entire film. <laughs> the, uh, we, I mean, really, we can't, like, we have hit the chickens so much. Uh, we have, we have kicked that chicken harder than, than one would kick a pig to kill it. The, the to, skeleton, to the, the, the burnt death. skeleton at the end is worth talking oh, yeah, about. This. That's, that's true. Clearly plastic, but how about the, how about you, you go ahead, take this one. Just the meditation scene that again goes on way too long with the creepy voice chanting in his head. There's, there's some weird ass stuff in all of the, in all of the, like, his he goes to like, he, it's by a little river. There's a little brook. It's quite pretty. There's a statue of Buddha, so he talks to Buddha, and uh, the Buddha uh, whispers. Everything, everything from the Buddha has a whisper, uh, but it's, but it's not quite Zen Cohen's. It's really, really obvious information. Uh, <laughs> like it, it, the Buddha repeats about 150,000 times. Beware of Chan. He's evil. He's evil. Chan. Chan. He's evil. <laughs> Beware of Chan. He's evil. It's like, we got it. We got yeah, it. Kind of, Stop it. Yeah. How do, you, how, do you tell, how do you tell Buddha, like, really move along? You've got to, <laughs> you've got to, you've got to get the, you got to get, also, also traveling in the spiritual void can be dangerous. Yes. Um, a billion there, times I said that. <laughs> I can repeat it over and over. Oh. There's, a, there's a great bit where, where uh, Simon is standing on this beach and, uh, and the bad guy appears to him. And he says, "Go home, Simon." And then, and then, cuts to a close shot of Simon back to the bad guy, and he's like about twenty feet further down the beach. Go home, Simon. And then, cuts to our good guy. Cuts to the bad guy. He's about a twenty more feet down the beach. Go home, Simon. And <laughs> he's just getting further. <laughs> it does this like six that's, times. That's awesome. <laughs> oh my god, it's so awesome. I forgot about that one. So. So for only the second time in the history of uh, of Kung Fu Electric Boogaloo, let's make this uh, a perfect score for what the fuck moments from all of us. Oh, <laughs> uh, God. The, for reference, The Doll is the only film that has gotten a perfect score in this category before. Wow. Oh. Wow. Just, oh, just wow. out of curiosity, do you think the guy who wrote the alien box art <laughs> description just watched this movie and just said, Fuck, what are they going to do? Argue with me? Yeah, I think that's exactly what happened, actually. Yeah, now. Enough, yeah. No one can tell anything. All right. Oh, God. Stan, Stan, what are you going to remember from this movie? <laughs> the chickens. Chickens, that's what I'm going to remember. That uh, Every time I eat chicken, it's going to be like, <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm furious. But uh, um, this, is, this is one of those cases where I think, as a whole, I'm not, like... Certain things in the middle, like most of, most of the story, well, story, let's use that word loosely, <laughs> but, uh, you know, so, like, the whole thing is kind of a melange. It's going to be like this is this big blender drink of, of uh, what the fuck. And so I think more than anything else, I'm likely to remember the experience of watching this movie more so than actually certain points within the movie. Like I'm never, ever going to forget of course, of course, as you, as you just said, you know, go home, go home. <laughs> like it's just the, Those things I expect will come up, you know, it, multiple times on this, on this uh, show where we wind up, you, you know, it's like, this person is evil they're evil, <laughs> like all those great things. Like I well remember that, and I think those will come through. Um, wow, the, the, it's there's just so much to this movie. Uh, I'm gonna go with seven. Um, yeah, I, I mean, we all we always get a little confused in this category with between WTF. but the sheer volume of WTF, I think, is what is. M- m- Memorable and the bizarreness of it. I I think this is movie is really memorable. 
you know what? I would go with an eight, but I'm going to subtract one for the box art because I could could quite the box art and the title. I'm minusing one because if I own this on DVD, I could imagine sorting through my DVDs and grabbing out the box art. Go, oh, I I like this ninja film. <laughs> And pop it in, and all of a sudden, it all comes flooding back to me what this is. Um, so, yeah, seven. I've still never figured out what box art and, and DVDs and this stuff and titles have to do with the movie. Um, but, I mean, yeah, it is. It is all WTF. It's so crazy. It, this movie is unforgettable, but not for anything that they did on that was well done. <laughs> it, it's, it's such a weird movie because it's like it's – like, not overly violent because they couldn't really afford a lot of special effects. The only thing closest might be the two heads and the table. Like there's no real special effects that, that, so there's nothing really violent. It's, there's no sex or anything. And yet I felt like I needed a shower when I was done watching it. I can't explain why. So I, I wish I could go higher, but it's just, it's just uh, more W the WTF is, is all encompassing. I feel like I should give WTF 16, because I'm going to give this a four to even that out so it gets what it should get, but I can't go higher than four or higher than ten, unfortunately. So I think I think Stan did go 14. <laughs> I, I I think chickens as a weapon, um, as a projectile weapon, is incredibly memorable. Uh, that's what, that's what I, mean. I, I I will say. I mean, the the title is actually the one thing that uh, that brings it down because I will. Equating this movie to the title is mm. going to be really, really tough. Absolutely, uh, I'm still going to go. I'm still going to do a seven, and that brings us to our final category, uh, which we call crazy concept. Well, you know, and uh, the, I have a I have a hard time with this one because I think when you boil down the component parts of the movie and you see the concept of like, okay, so the guy has to has to revenge his sister and it turns out that his master his sensei is actually evil and so then he has to go and fight through that to me that's not crazy in and of itself the fact that everything else is put upon it and the fact that that i okay so if there's aliens well then that's totally crazy i don't remember seeing them though so i can't necessarily put that in i mean i'll i'll add a bonus point onto my score for aliens but um but yeah like it it does not feel like the base concept was crazy the movie is batshit crazy um i'm just going to go with a 5 nick nick Boxer. oh yes uh... <laughs> <laughs> crazy concept yes Oh, ah, uh, crazy guy. See, I'd Some have to actually, uh, I'd actually have to admit there was a concept behind this movie. I don't think there was. I think they were just making shit up. Again, uh, which like... is crazy in of a, in, in of itself. Um. Yeah, you know what? I'm going to do what I did before when I was unsure in this movie. I'm going to go with last recorded score, four. Last recorded score was a five, wasn't it? Uh, Stan gave it a five. Oh. <laughs> okay, five then. Just, I give it a ten. I mean, chickens, sorcerers, sorcerers using chickens, and astral on purpose, though. possibly aliens, martial arts for no reason, Kids for no reason who at the end fight for no oh, reason. Oh, that, that's it. Oh, Jesus, man. That's uh, and clearly having no idea what you're doing, um, and yet having enough money to film this. Um, it's, it's like, could you imagine if guy if somebody did that? I, I mean, uh, yeah, this is a 10. I, I don't see how this thing is so insane, and all the ideas are insane. Uh. I am so, not sure any of this movie was done on purpose. It could have been spliced together as stock footage. I do not know what the concept is, uh, even at this point in the podcast, but I know that it's a 10. Well, the, I mean, the idea of the crazy concept is, like, if you were going to pitch this, 
like how out of the box is this is this pitch and the b plot of this movie revolves around a sorcerer generating chickens from thin airs to cut down costs at a restaurant <laughs> that's that's a real plot <laughs> that is in this film <laughs> When you put it like that, 10 seems way too low. <laughs> so a, t- a 10 for me as well. Um, I, 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 it's just, uh, it is so crazy, over the top, uh, wacky to me. All right. Uh, final changes to scores. Anyone want to? <laughs> <laughs> any, any final changes? All right. Oh. Every season we have six secret modifiers. This film does get one of those modifiers uh, it, for being for having the the blessed good taste to be under 80 minutes uh, it is it is 73 minutes gets a plus 1 for that giving it a resounding 81 out of 100 putting it in the oh. top 10 films we have done so far That's welcome to fair. the top 10 well. welcome to the top 10 putting it uh, so it it pushes down uh, raw force and comes in right behind frankenstein island oh wow pushes down raw force weird so this is uh, this is now the ninth movie. It pushes Hots out of the top ten. Uh, so it's the ninth highest rated movie we've done so far. We need to do more I'm... movies with boobs. <laughs> <laughs> if this if this had boobs, it would have been. Uh, I believe movie. Stan was mentioning that to me yesterday. Yes, yeah. I was. I, I was. think <laughs> if this movie had boobs, it would have it would have been the champ. Yeah. It would have helped that though, The champion almost. Ninja Three: The Domination has no boobs. I know. Which is why yeah. I think that to beat the champ, he got a he got a boob. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that, but second place is Flesh Gordon, which has more boobs than you. Can <laughs> that is that well, is. Well, it, it really shouldn't shake anything at them, honestly. Um, <laughs> this, this day and age. Um, <laughs> All right. Well, I can tell you, we're probably going to have eight movies that might compete for the top ten. I'm hoping. <laughs> well, that that is the that is the goal. So. All season. right. Well, Do the business first. We yes, we are between. Anvil and Hammer. So do the business. All right. Uh, You should please subscribe uh, and uh, or whatever you do on your favorite podcast app so that you get every episode. And uh, please rate us. Give us a review. It just helps push the podcast up so that other people hear about it. And we are on Instagram at Kung Fu Electric Boogaloo. We use the hashtag Kung Fu Electric Boogaloo. And we are uh, sponsored by WeTalkPodcast.com. They are the home of the Octagon, where you can find the ongoing record of our search for the Ultimate B movie. And they also have a Facebook and a Twitter. All right. That's, that's beautiful stuff. Beautiful stuff. Nice work. Okay, well, we so so we've kind of uh, adjusted this because as we as we jump now onto preparing to talk about the Enter the Octagon season, we love the Jim Raider so much that even though we had an order, we have asked Jim to to give us a new order so that when as we as we explain our movies, then uh, then we can be Jim Raided. So please. All right, Jim right away. <laughs> All right, so I will. Everybody I will. gets two choices. I should put that out there for people, our first time listeners. Everybody will submit two two movies. That's right. um, so it'll be eight for the season, as it always is. All right, uh, Jim right. Uh, we start with, uh, if I can remember the order that everything goes in, we start with Nick. Nick, um, do we care which one I do first? Nope. Uh, let's do unlikely uh, possession. Do you, do you, do you, oh, I thought. Let's do unlikely possession. Yeah. Unlikely possession. Mm-hmm. Well, you know what? This season, I had got great joy out of uh, diving into the full moon Charles Charles Band pool. Mm-hmm. I want to go back. I found one on Tubi that. Uh, fits this category i want to watch crash Cars so what is unlike the possessions concept the concept is simply anything possessed by a demon or devil that causes trouble in a movie that is not a human that is not a human yes no humans can be possessed fair enough there's a gazillion so, of those movies yes there is a zillion of them but i my my movie is definitely a car being possessed, which I think is pretty wacky, and it looks like a hell of a lot of fun. Crash. What what year did that come out? I'm just trying to 
<laughs> to track There's it like down. like 400 movies called Crash. So, so it's not the one that won. On the, I'm assuming it's not the one that won the Oscar, though. No one remembers <laughs> what that movie it is. It is the oh. one uh, one on Tubi in the full moon section. All right. <laughs> okay. I'm sure we'll be able to track it down then. That seems a little easier. <laughs> All right. Uh, Jimmerate. Jack. Oh, um, Jack. So budget boogaloo. Budget Boogaloo I'm doing. Okay. All right. Well, Budget Boogaloo, of course, means that you are picking a, a the season. If I should, if this movie should win, this will be the season we will do. Uh, that is what Enter the Octagon is about. We're all representing, a setting a movie to represent a season we want to do. Uh, Budget Boogaloo means that it must be a movie that is made for a million dollars or less, and that is a, by, adjusted by inflation. So luckily I found a movie, though, that was made for $7,500. <laughs> Nice. Now, now that said, it, it's not really seventy five hundred because adjusted for inflation, it's one hundred and forty four thousand dollars because this movie was made in nineteen thirty four. Arguably, the first Boogaloo mis- movie in history. Many people have said that this is the first uh, movie that's uh, the first worst movie ever made. The first, uh, the first so bad it's good movie ever made. Nineteen thirty four. We're gonna do Sex Maniac. Mm, all right then. Huh. Public am, domain masterpiece. I am unfamiliar. All right. Sex Maniac. 1934, you say? 1934. All Look, right. It does sound also right up our alley. Yeah. Oh, it's it's going to be up our alley. Oh, uh, is that ma- oh Maniac? Oh, okay, yeah. Yeah, also known as Maniac. Yeah, a former vaudevillian gifted with impersonation assists a mad scientist in reanimating corpses and soon goes mad himself. All right. And Jim Reed. It's me. All right. My my first season, first movie of my first season, whatever you want to call it, <laughs> uh, is uh, is Scum and Villainy, a season uh, dedicated to the great Jim Wynorski. A uh, little, little trivia for you. In, uh, in 2019, I watched 40 Jim Wynorski films. And I and I've still got and there's still like ten on Prime that I haven't watched. <laughs> Puzzle man. I, if if this one makes it through, uh, then then I will be pitching Fred Olin Ray as a follow up. Uh, so I had so many to choose from. I had like I I really I I mulled this for a long time trying to find the one, but I, I'm actually going to go with one I did not watch yet. But it is Wynorski's personal favorite of his films, uh, so I think it's uh, it's worthy. Transylvania Twist is the name of the film, and uh, we'll we'll find a place that it exists. <laughs> <laughs> we'll find it somewhere. All, All right. right, Stan. Stan, I guess it goes Stan right that leaves uh, one shit wonder. One shit wonder. Yeah. So so my concept for one shit wonder, of course, is that uh, there's lots of guys out there who their their goal was to make a movie, and they made a movie, and it was a piece of shit. But it was a <laughs> funny piece of shit, and that's why we're going to talk about it. So these are the guys who've just managed to to make like that one movie, or like really few, whether it's a director, filmmaker, that kind of thing. But uh, maybe just an actor, maybe both. But uh, so the movie for me that I am choosing is called Miami Connection. Oh yeah, mm. brilliant choice. Have not Miami seen it, Connection. but its reputation is is. Um, yeah, worthy. ninjas, taekwondo. I mean, <laughs> and a band. You know, it's like, nice. what? What more do I? What more do I need? Right? It just made me realize how we didn't properly sell the band from the from. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's true. There's a lot. That they're we they're didn't playing these sell. instruments. They're jumping around for no reason. They're just jumping, playing their instruments, and in, and in, in, uh, furious. They're just. I, I like how you say play, playing their instruments. Their yeah, that's a good point. Yeah, well, wearing. Wearing whites and yeah. sunglasses that for no reason <laughs> well, indoors. Well, I don't no, know. No, I know why they were wearing whites and sunglasses because they're security guards. So apparently, the security they... guards just oh. basically do this on their downtime. Is they play as like Alt Depot. Yeah. How about the closing credits where it it shows some things, including the band for no reason jumping around some more. Uh-huh. The just, closing just, credits is WTF. Just footage. Just footage, man. <laughs> All right, man. Uh, back to back to the Jimmerator. All right, and Jim Ray. Jim Ray. Jack. So yeah. that is uh, don't go into the woods. Don't go near the. Wa- don't go in the water. 
Yeah, so the idea is you would have to pick one movie that would feature a creature or takes place in the woods, a creature from the woods or takes place in the woods, and we'd feature one, you'd pick one movie that would go from uh, uh, the water. You'd either take place near or in the water or feature a creature from the water. So that would be what you'd have to do on that season. I uh, was hoping to find one that was that featured both, and there's certainly lots out there, but, but I just wanted to do this movie a little more. And no, it is not because it's too obvious. Don't go in the woods. The 1981 slasher, uh, because the reason I didn't pick that is because it was made for twenty one thousand dollars. So I thought it was too close <laughs> to my other my other concept. So we're going to do one about uh, called Spookies from nineteen eighty six. A sorcerer tries to sacrifice a, a group of people inside his house with the intention of using their vitality to keep his wife alive, and the house is on the edge of a forest, which plays a part in the movie. So that is the concept, Spookies. Spookies. All right. And that's Jim Spookies I E S. I E S, all right. Nick. Alrighty. My concept, I believe I called it Hey, that animal's wearing people clothes. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Yep. <laughs> this movie would have qualified. That's fair. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It the, totally would have. This proposed season would Anything that has a dog or a cat or a bear in people clothes, sunglasses, anything like that on the poster, it counts as a movie. And to represent this genre, and I really want to win, but I think one category in this movie was going to be a zero. The rest are going to be tens. But I can't wait to make your guys' eyes bleed because I know it will. I picked the first animated film ever on this podcast and probably the highest budget we've ever had on this podcast. I want to watch with you guys Food Fight, the Charlie Sheen supermarket movie that looks absolutely unbelievable. Food Fight. Okay, what's the what's the animal that's uh, in Cleveland Close? Oh, it's a dog. Okay. <laughs> Well, there's, there's, they're, they're all in human clothes in that one. Okay. Right. But yeah, and he, he's Charlie Sheen's dating Lindsay Lohan, I believe, or it could be a uh, Hillary Duff. That was Hillary Duff. All I, all I know is that making that, that. It's on YouTube. It was on Tubi as of yesterday. It is no longer on Tubi. <laughs> I, I just Lord. spent a little bit of time panicking. <laughs> I, 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 I just Amazing. love the idea that. That opening this up to animation makes it so much easier because you know, all of a sudden you can do Yogi Bear, you can do all this stuff. Whereas before I was like, man, what are you gonna do? Well, I'm right. yeah. Oh yeah, cool. I, I bet you the live action Yogi Bear would uh, would score. Mm. That's what I was thinking. <laughs> <laughs> and Jimmerate. Jimmerate. Dan. Okay, well... Keep it, uh, keep it in the Family was the name of the Keep it in the Family, that's right. Which means that we're talking about movies that that are made with, you know, the the relatives of the big-name actors, where uh, where it's just like, you're, try, you're trying to sell somebody based on the name only. So, in this case, you know, we love our action in this, uh, in this uh, show, and so for me, I am going with Frank Stallone, the brother <laughs> Sylvester Stallone, and we are going to talk about Terror in Beverly Hills. All right, I've, I've been watching uh, some old Norm Macdonald SNL, and uh, Frank Stallone was his punchline. Uh, for <laughs> <laughs> awesome for like, every joke, like it, it would be like, yeah, Frank Stallone would be the punchline. It was awesome. Um, uh, Terror in Beverly Hills is what it's called. Yeah, I'm I'm excited because apparently they could afford him for two days. <laughs> <laughs> Did not have the budget for a Frank Stallone. <laughs> and and his Amazing. and his character name is Hack Stone. That's uh, uh, that's awesome. That's like, that's like saying, uh, like we 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 don't we can't put the money together to get Joe Estevez. <laughs> 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 all, right. all right. Well, I, I will close out the season with a with a season uh, called "I Hate Sand." It gets everywhere <laughs> uh, as an homage to uh, the great Anakin Skywalker. Uh, so this is a season of uh, deserts and 
beaches and uh, movies that rip off Dune, uh, which is a lot. <laughs> like a lot, a lot. <laughs> so any movie that's got a lot of sand around gets mm. to go in this season. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And, uh, I'm, and I'm putting in a movie that uh, it's been a long road. To get this movie into the uh, into the into the season, uh, I've talked about it a lot. I know that uh, I know that you've all been interested in getting this uh, this movie into the show. It is Albert Payune's Road to Hell. Oh. <laughs> you completely oh, that's great. <laughs> I've well, I found a produce on demand blu-ray company that produces road to hell so i i own a copy of road to hell the the official unofficial sequel to streets of fire all right there you go amazing this is great i i'm can't wait for uh, enter the octagon one i'm hoping this becomes an annual tradition to do this once once a year maybe to kick off the season or well, the kick off the new year every year we do like our annual traditions in fairness yeah. you Speaking of which, coming up. That's right. We're going to be doing our uh, our second annual annual tradition, second annual annual uh, tradition of uh, of going through kind of the best of the last the last year, the year in review, and as well entering some more saints into the Saints of Boogaloo, the Hall of Fame of the KFAB. That's right. So yeah, I, yeah, I, I can't believe it's over, but. Uh, Season ten has wrapped up. Do you believe in magic? And, and and so at the end of the season now, I I most definitely believe in magic, and I and I do think that Furious really helped me believe. But how about the rest of you, gentlemen? Uh, just you know, I'm wondering it... what the top three for the season are. Hmm. Uh, I don't know. It's a lot of math. That's that's uh, right. <laughs> <laughs> we don't we don't want to do math. I I know right. that I I know that what... out on the it's uh, later. it's 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 a uh, Furious and then uh, Death Stalker. Uh, Death Stalker Two, and then uh, Ninja the Violent Sorcerer. That was our, those were our top three. Well, I certainly do believe in magic after this season, but uh, but I also look forward to entering the octagon and believing in Boogaloo for uh, next season. <laughs> so, so yeah, let, let's do that. Let's uh, let's. Uh, I'm good to go. How about how about you guys? You good to go? Yeah, you want to start watching stuff now? Yeah, yeah, let's do that. Let's do that. Definitely. We got to we got to go and watch Crash right now. All right. So, fuck it. I'm leaving. Uh go home. Go home. But um okay. For Nick and for Jack oh, yes. and for Jim, I am your host, Eighth Dan Stanadu, and thank you for listening to the Kung Fu Electric Boogaloo.
go home.